Hello, I'm David W. Parker, and this is Programming Today I Learned, episode 10 in the Rails. We're going to go ahead and continue our pipeline with Heroku and push to production. And then we're going to look at a few add-ons that I like, and then keep on at it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So first thing to do is we're going to promote to production. So let's tab back over to our instance here. So it's blurred out right now. It says no changes to promote. But basically, after you've deployed anything to Heroku, like we did last time, this will have changed. And you'll see the hash right here for the last deploy. If you've made a change, you can push this button. And it'll give a little pop-up. And it says promote to production. And you click that. And that's all you have to do. So if you already have all of your applications set up, like we did last time, with environment variables on both, uh, so you have the same environment variables set over here, that's literally all you have to do. And then it's going to go ahead and deploy it. And it should be pretty dang quick. So um, that is worth noting. So that's all you really have to do to promote it. Then, of course, because uh, depending on your schema, I'm assuming that you're not going to be sh sharing your database between your staging environment and your production environment, you'll need to still do any kind of migrations. So this would be the same line we did last time, but for the production API. And then, of course, if you want to log in, you can always access that application. You don't have to do this. So super simple. Uh, that's it for in terms of, of deploying and promoting things from staging to production. So you've already tested it. You feel good about it. You're confident in your code. You're confident in whatever you've run. Go ahead and push it. Next up, we're going to look at some add-ons. So I use quite a few add-ons. Um, I normally stick to the free tier on a lot of them, at least for you know random indie hacker things. If you're doing stuffing for work or whatever, you could be on a paid plan, of course. But So let's just look at a few of them real quick. So the first thing I want to look at is actually, we're going to go in reverse order here, is this Heroku scheduler. It's kind of like a cron job. So if you're unfamiliar with crons, it's basically a task that runs at a given time um, on your machine. So with the free version, the Heroku scheduler, that's a, a paid upgrade one that they have, you only really have a few uh, choices. You can run every 10 minutes, every hour at a specific time, and then uh, at the day at a specific time. So not as you know, not as flexible as a true cron. That's what the other uh, add-on will do. But for free, this is great. So you can say, hey, I'm going to run every hour. And their example is node billing. And so you have some kind of thing that processes. Very simple. Uh, it runs it just like you would within any kind of other cron system. So um, the next one is be the, well, actually, I'm kind of jumping around here. This is the new relic instance. So this, again, is the free one. This is my staging environment. It's kind of slow because I just it, like repush to it, and it doesn't live up all the times. So you can like kind of dig into what transactions you have. And you can see as it loads, my API talk index over here. And I can kind of dig into it and see where, you know, what was slow and how long it takes. New Relic is fantastic, can get expensive. Um, but if you do paid upgrades, you can get access to like stuff like your database queries and a lot more information. It's a pretty fantastic tool on the whole to figure out where your bottlenecks are in your application. Um, the next one I have up here, okay, this is Librato. This is another performance monitoring monitoring tool. So you can kind of like dig in a little bit more too. Um, it's more tied to Heroku, so uh, you can see a little more information depending on the plan that you're on. Um, I don't find it to be as useful or as powerful as... Uh, New Relic, but I also haven't used it a ton. Uh, I just noticed there was another one out there for free. The next one I have up here is log entries. I love log entries. So a lot of times you might want to figure out what's going on um, and you want to check your logs. So the nice thing about log entries is it has a lot of capabilities to filter. To So this is me on my staging environment for Listen Addict. Um, I had a live tail on, so I, I was doing things and I could see exactly what's going on, what queries are being run, you could see how long they take because this is um, just pure log from from the file. So they have a lot of uh, things that I don't really take advantage of in terms of you could do different like log types and different files and have it be a pretty powerful um, plan. 
I'm going to have it automatically store stuff to S3 and do all sorts of great stuff with it. I normally use it just as a pure logging tool to see what's going on, and I'll do some searching every now and then. Um, but again, fantastic tool, nice free tier, um, does more or less what a lot of indie hackers will need and has a lot of ways to expand and improve. Redis Cloud, so I'm using uh, Redis Enterprise Cloud. This is from Redis Labs right now. Uh, I can kind of just give you insights into what you're doing with your Redis instances. Uh, we're not using any yet in our Rails app, but we will be. So this is a, a nice, again, they, they provide a, a nice little free tier. It's not super big. I think it's like 30 megabytes or something. But I'm like using two on my, yeah, 30 megabytes for the free tier. And I'm using two on my staging environment. So um, nice little tool, free again. Um, there, was, of course, will be some uh, latency of using any of these external tools um, versus running yourself if you have everything inside of a Docker instance, say. Next up is Honey Badger. This is where I catch all of my uh, bugs. I don't have any on the staging environment, so this is going to be really, really boring. There's nothing to show here. But in general, at least for Ruby applications, it's pretty good about showing your stack trace and a lot of the information, such as the refer and any other information that could be useful in determining where a bug happened. Um, definitely something we use a lot in my uh, day job as well. And then of course, the long, last one here was the, this is the Heroku Postgres. So this is actually in the data clip section. And it's kind of a, another way if you don't, if you wanna like go ahead and create some queries and run some things. So I just created this query called test. I'll select star from staging database uh, database to schema to users, and there's my one user. So it's kind of a, a nice little tool um, that you can do. And then, of course, there's a lot more that you can do with that, but that's basically an insight and a way to get access to the database um, directly, more or less. Um, so that's it in terms of add-ons that I've really used a lot. Uh, I've also used um, SendGrid in the past. I actually have a lot of weird uh, problems with them, so I don't use them anymore. I use Mailgun as an alternative. You can use Mailgun's free add-on if you wish. I have a paid account that's separate, so I don't generally do it as an add-on, um, but they do have a, a good little free add-on as well. So a lot to explore there. Um, if we go, let me just open this real quick and say, Roku Market, please. If you go ahead and look at all of the add-ons in the marketplace, they have all sorts of stuff. So let's do, do add-ons. So whether you're wanting to look at, like I said, data stores for Redis, there's Redis to go, Redis Enterprise Cloud. You got MariaDB, JawsDB, uh, all sorts of stuff there. Data stores, um, monitoring. So if this is like my Labrado, I said, you ping them if you want to have a ping, New Relic, all of these interesting, you know, they're all very, very similar. Um, paper trail, log entry, so like a lot of different logging options. Email, again, I used Mailgun in the past, SendGrid. Um, I, now I use, um, uh, I just forgot, I just said it. Anyway, um, all sorts of different options there. Memcache built in, errors and error handling, a lot of different options there. Content management systems, if you're into that. Search, you can add Elasticsearch, which is pretty common, or Solar, or Syncs, those are all pretty popular. Oh, and Algolia, cool. Um, more metrics, monitoring, some testing, message queue systems network, all sorts of stuff. So I'm not gonna go through all of these, but take a look um, and see what you have. Look at this, like real auto scale, queue based auto scaling for yours out. So all sorts of interesting things. Um, image processing, video processing. Wow, they got everything nowadays. So take a look, you know, it really depends on what your project needs are. Uh, my needs are generally pretty simple. I'm not doing a 
too much with video processing and whatnot, but maybe I should. Who knows? Uh, Web to PDF, that's awesome. Um, so we'll continue to build out our application though, and now that we're gonna have a way to deploy this and a spot to deploy it to, you can follow along in your own app and I will continue to show what add-ons I add as well as any kind of configuration there is. So we'll build, be building this out in public. It'll be a nice little space you can take a look at and enjoy. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and like if you can. Thank you.